500 likes because these were the scariest videos in 2023. When I put you in a situation where you are in a random abandoned house, and the house looks as cursed as you are on a Sunday morning after a harsh weekend, then I ask you to stay there chill and composed. Will you be able to? In a normal situation, when asked such a random question out of the blue, you may insult me in the comments, then somehow find my location and send me some assassin to get the job done, after you have been fed up with my introductions for too long. You might think I'm over-exaggerating at this point, but believe me, some people, some newcomers, would write stuff down there with full hatred as if I had said something mean to them. Anyhow, back to our first question, you won't be able to stay chill in most cases. The house is located in the woods, in Poland, for the sake of the story. It's cold and dark outside, just like my attitude when I pretend to be cool and full of knowledge. After all of that, it's true that the place has been abandoned for far too long but almost everything in it was left there for some reason, even the family pictures. By the way, the place is a mess. It's not like some organization acquired it and made it a pay-to-visit historical place. No, it's just like any ordinary abandoned house. But if that's the case, does that mean the family who owned the property was in such a hurry to leave that they left everything behind? Which means there has most likely been some dark force haunting the house, which pushed them to take the decision in a hurry. And that would be so reasonable, aside from all of this and that, there are crosses across the walls, with one being inverted. The dude investigating was so chill, but you could also feel the terror inside of him, especially after the music box started playing out of nowhere. In the end, a cross fell down, and then it seemed as if something had grabbed him.
instant I caught a glimpse of the house's interior through the window, I would have bolted out of there. Seriously, take a good look at this place. It resembles a horror attraction. Whenever you think of Ouija board, you are thinking of me. Why you particularly? Maybe because I always show you different clips of people experimenting with that piece of crap. Well, here it is again, back in action. Where is it? In the next video, don't be ridiculous. But who is dealing with it this time? The hook, is that a name you took from some cartoon show or something? Nope, I actually removed the last two letters of his name to keep it family friendly. Or, in other words, YouTube friendly. But what were the last two letters? The E and the R in order. Okay, now that we are standing on the same ground somehow, what happened to Mr. Hook? Well, he finally decided to conduct a session with the demons lurking in the shadows of his house. It was his first time, and he was worried, scared, and shaking. It feels as if I'm describing my first ever experience in bed after getting married. He did the thing with this board, caught nothing, and didn't get any attention from the demons he was seeking, as they didn't even bother to touch the planchet. All right then, where is the scary part? Have you ever heard of the saying that says, if you had been patient, you would have eaten well? Well, I just made it up. Hours or days after this experimentation, the kitchen was activated. Activated, you say? What was his kitchen like? A gaming console. What I meant to say was that the paranormal activity kicked in, the storage door, and the refrigerator were all in action while other stuff was being thrown around. Although this might not sound as much, the sensation in Hookie's words, and I'm talking about the dude, not the sport, was full of fear and regret. As he described it, he regretted effing with the Ouija board. Effing with the board. Did he actually do it? Yes. How and where? Just like all the other people on the table. But the most terrifying and weird clip was when he captured himself sleepwalking in the basement, almost staring at the security camera. Is anybody in this room? I would like to say hi or talk to me or tell me why you're here. Tell me why you've been tormenting me for like three years now. Maybe you're the one that I saw in Dire Lane that night. I don't think that I need to be touching it for any reason. I think that if you're present, you could move it yourself. I've seen you move things in my house. Many, many times, if you are present and you would like to talk to me, please move that triangle over to the yes. Nothing. Um, or you can move it to the no. If you don't want to talk, just let me know. Oh, forgot one thing. <laughs> Whoops. Goodbye, whoever might be in the room um, and doesn't want to talk. Goodbye. Go back to where you were. Goodbye. I should never feel that Ouija board. Somebody commented and pointed out that they don't think it's me. And so I looked over it and I kind of don't think it's me either. And it appeared to float 
into the light-ish area, it floated. Check it out. He said that it wasn't him that was sleepwalking. If that's the case, then you should check if you have a secret twin brother or if someone who just happened to look like you is somewhere hiding in the house, because that thing is definitely not a demon. When you read the title on screen, you might take a look at yourself and your life and think, what is the purpose of me here? Why did they leave me alone? All I said was that this earth seems to be flat, not rounded, and then I can explain to you exactly why they have abandoned you. But who told you I wrote this title as a way to describe your current situation? I was talking about the dude in the next video. How disrespectful. So you're telling us the next guy, whom we will call Josh, was left alone because he shared his inner thoughts out loud. No, he was alone because his family was minding their own business outside, while he had nothing to do that day, so he stayed in the house. He started experiencing some strange activities he had witnessed before, so this isn't his first time. Then, good for him, he found a friend no one else could share with him. Do you call these demons friends? Why are you so mean? They are people just like us after all. Maybe they steal our stuff while we are not paying attention, but at least those who befriended Josh did it to make him feel surrounded as he was left alone. And who told you I was talking about some polite group of thieves, or even humans in the first place? I meant some real demonic ghosts, who were making some sounds like whispers and thuds messing with doors and turning the light switches on and off. Tengo ratos escuchando ruidos en la casa. Y... No hay nadie, estoy yo solo. Mis papás se fueron ahorita a un concierto. Mi hermana está con mi abuela. Y no, no, no hay nadie. Estoy grabando esto porque ya no es, no es la primera vez que me pasa y pues... ¿Qué fue eso? Ay, carajo. Mierda. Mierda. Okay, okay. <coughs> Sería tonto preguntar si hay alguien ahí porque soy yo que, que hay algo aquí. No. Ay, no.
This is what I call a night to remember. Not only did he have to experience all of these terrifying activities on his own, but he also had to capture them on camera. Ghost theory, and no folks, I'm not about to break down some theory I have come up with about ghosts, but this is the nickname of the duo in the next video. Joe and the other dude, right now, I'm not aware of his name, but if I get to feature them in the future again, then I will definitely pick up his name. It has to be pronounced by Joe at some point. What an interesting topic to discuss, just get to the video already. Okay then. Joe, and let's call the other guy Jeff for now. So what's the deal with Joe and Jeff for now? Just Jeff, by the way. These two headed into an abandoned cottage. As far as I know, the location is a 300-year-old abandoned cottage built on a plague pit. In the video, they discuss the stories of a vicar who deserted the villagers during a plague outbreak in 1665. So, what were they able to come up with? Did they invent some new technological invention that will change the world of gin for good? Though, they just did an ordinary paranormal investigation, but they picked a lot of activities, from sounds of faucets opening, to doors slamming, to footsteps, to different sounds and noises. It seems as if most of these sounds were coming from the second floor, which they went to and spent quite a long time in there, which takes us to the best shift in this whole story, what happened to Joe. He was once a cool calm dude, with glasses on, which represented wisdom and knowledge, and his rolled back hat on, which gave off a sweet smudge of excitement. He was such a cool dude. But as the investigation proceeded, Joe started to lose control of his senses. He took the hat off, and so he did with the glasses. He was getting dizzy, sweaty, and almost on the path of getting possessed, as it seems. We were just setting up to record the intro when we could hear what we could only explain as water running through the pipes above us. Bang on there, and yeah. then suddenly, like, some water leaking. Yeah, that's like steam. Yeah, yeah. We've got to find out what that is. You can hear it here. Yeah. It sounds like the heating's being turned on, and it's like heating yeah. up, isn't it? Yeah, like all the pipes just started flowing all of a sudden. That is so weird. It's stopped now, isn't it? It's upstairs. It's at the upstairs tap. It's a bathroom, isn't there? Because it's weird. What, it's a 300-year-old cottage built on a plague pit. So, I just want to sort of sum up because you've probably been... This place has one of the most creepy vibes we've ever had. Do you hear that? Mm. We've never heard that here before. No. We've been this is the first, yeah. It's like the fourth time we've ever been here. We've been, the problem is, water doesn't just run without anywhere to go. But I, I can now hear it underneath us. So below, below us now is where the kitchen is. Yeah. We're constantly chasing it. Yeah. Jesus Christ. That was the door. That was the door. That was, yeah. That made me jump like that. So did that. That was the door. The kitchen door shut. Mm. Really? Wind? I know, but wind. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, uh, yeah like a panic so attack, I suppose, is yeah. the best way to put it. I'm actually just going to fall asleep in there. Yeah, not in this place, you know. <laughs> I want to go out. I do not want to stay here. I feel like I could just fall asleep. Like, just stood up.
Those noises aren't helping. Seriously? What was that? How much battery have we got? Okay, so this is why we weren't going to release this video. At no point are we claiming that I was possessed or anything paranormal was going on here, and people probably wonder why we didn't just leave. It was because this obviously wasn't planned, and we were hoping to continue with the investigation once I was feeling better. I had been working a lot that week and had pretty much been living off of energy drinks. We don't want to lose your trust in thinking that this was faked as some paranormal encounter and this is genuinely how it happened, but it does make this episode much creepier than we anticipated. Joe, we need to go. really sorry about the lighting, guys. I really hope you can hear that. Footsteps. I'm going to go and have a look, Joe. I'm seriously shaking. The longer their stay persisted, the escalating danger became noticeable. Joe, by the investigation's end, seemed transformed, markedly different from the man I once knew. I speak as if our acquaintance spans years, though it's merely from observing this investigation. If you are reading the title on screen and thinking to yourself, why does this guy keep thinking that we actually care about what he writes on the screen? Even though that is not what I had in mind for your inner thoughts, I will pretend like I heard nothing, as if you had said anything in the first place. So you're saying this is where it all started? Are you referring to the miserable day when your mom gave birth to this guy who will grow up to become one of the most disgusting humans on earth? Well, that's not how I visualize myself, but whatever. No, I wasn't talking about myself. We are talking about Mario. Are you serious? We thought this was a list of the scariest videos caught in 2023, not the history of Mario. Yes, but who told you I was talking about the plumber? I'm not talking about any games here. Mario Lara is a dude who works at a toy shop. He has been featured in this channel multiple times, but it has been long since we have last seen anything from him, and that's obviously due to the fact that he hasn't been putting out any fresh content. But I finally caught him off guard. Did you really? Yes, but how did you get access to his browsing history? I meant, I caught him off guard uploading some fresh content. Maybe I didn't use the right words to explain my point. Anyhow, the next video dates all the way back to March of 2007. How refreshing. I thought when you said fresh, you meant something new, not some old video you haven't shown before. This documentary was uploaded by him recently, so learn to be patient before judging. Now you're doomed to listen to the rest. Basically, it's a documentary about Mario and his two friends staying the night in the very toy shop he works at. At first, it was all laughs and cracking jokes until they heard some sounds. Then the light started turning on and off by itself. When they got to the room where the incident took place, the phenomenon stopped. But the light switch won't function as it should. That light bulb later shattered somehow, and it ended with strange noises, followed by a sheet of fabric falling. <laughs> Es una cámara viejita. Lo que todos estamos ansiosos, nerviosos. ¿Estás ansioso, nervioso? Sí, la verdad sí, güey. Pásense. ¿Cómo se sienten, güey? Nervioso, ansioso y preocupado por lo que acaba de pasar con el padre. Tú eres un mes.
es de mucha manifestación. Entonces tampoco queremos que nos vaya a sobrepasar. Sí, exacto. ¿Sí? Venimos preparados con agua bendita, protegidos. Esta vez yo ya vengo protegido. Esta lada es esta. Esta es otra cámara. Este. Esta, Joshua. Esta vamos a instalar una casita que vamos a acampar en esta parte. ¿De qué? Ah, sí. Esta cámara. Vamos a ver si funciona el super cepillo de dientes poderoso. Ahí está. Queda comprobado. Pero. Cabrón, pero tú no tienes cara bonita. Vale madre, güey. Vale madre, güey. Porque así no se ve sin la lámpara. Oye, güey. Una lámpara. Oye, che, canto. Mario. ¿Qué? Apagada la luz. Así es cierto, güey. Es lo que les digo, güey, que falla con la... Son... O falla la luz de... en general de toda la tienda, pero no porque está prendida esta. Sí, es que no podría ser. Si se hubiera dado la luz, esta no se hubiera dado la luz. Es que sí falla, güey. A ver, ¿Qué? 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 vamos a ver.
¡No mames! ¡No mames! ¡Se cayó! ¡Se cayó! Sí, el mono estaba brincando. Sí, 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 estaba sí, brincando. sí, sí, sí. ¡Cantó, cantó! Estaba brincando, güey. El mono. Estaba brincando, güey. Estaba brincando. Estaba brincando el mono ese. De que está en el suelo, en el, en el, en el, sillo, en el sillón. Es... Ah, ya. ¿Qué estaba pasando? ¿Qué hizo? ¿Qué? They have mentioned something about a figure they had encountered once before. It's called Padre October. Such a cool name. I don't see what's so cool about it. I'm going to say something smart in the next few seconds that should make me sound like a professional to the vast majority of people. Back in 1953, after World War II ended, and the flowers started blooming again, and the birds are back at it with their tweets, before Twitter was a thing. In fact, before the internet was even a thing. So what the heck happened in that freaking year? Some railways line was left to rot and dismantled. Is that the professional line that I wanted to say that should make me a genius? I think so. Grizzly Bear is on a trip to camp in that location where people said the lady in white is hunting. And who is that bit in white? And since when do grizzly bears camp in the woods? Did I say a grizzly bear? I meant grizzly gaz. That's as far as I know about this dude, plus the fact that he laughs at everything literally. You may tell him that his entire family passed away in a plane crash, and he will say something emotionally charged before he mixes it up with a laugh. But in the clips you will see, he is not laughing, he is living tragedy. Now the real question is, what did he encounter? He himself just heard the sounds, but Fendi was the one to see the invisible. So his girlfriend had some secret vision powers, you say. Freddy is not his girl, she is the dog. Not that he is in a relationship with a dog, I meant that he just has a dog. Let's call the grizzly dude Brian. Brian was hearing singing and whistling sounds, which he couldn't find its source, while Fendi gave the reaction of someone who is seeing a falling dude. I mean, a falling angel. I'm doing a bit of a stealth camp. Because you're not really supposed to be in these woods. But there is a spooky story that goes with these woods. The Lady in White is supposed to haunt this location. It's an old dismantled railway. And apparently the lady who lived at the farm up on top of this hill, she hung herself down here. Now this is going back into the uh, 1800s, I think it was. Hello? Hello?
Even our friends will hurt that. Hello? Come on, mate. Why did he have to choose the worst place to camp? But let's face it, nearly every camping spot on this planet is deemed somewhat eerie. So, if I were to hear singing sounds in such a situation, I wouldn't be holding a knife like a butcher. My gun would be raised. Well, truth be told, I'd probably be on the ground, paralyzed with fear. I couldn't even handle a gun. The next video was captured by a single mother, and it's a sequence of clips compiled together to form a single video, just like the single mother we have here. What kind of introduction? Never mind. Keep going. As you wish, this single mother, who has more than one kid as things stand, is dealing with the paranormal in her house. Wait, there are already two possible outcomes. Either these hauntings were caused by the husband, who is trying to make her life a suffering experience to take his revenge on her, or it was also done by him, but in the hope of her seeking his help, so he can actually get the job done and they get back together. Well, these are some nice made up stories, but we don't even know if the husband was divorced or if he just passed away. And if it happened that he was actually in the afterlife, maybe that's the aftermath of his passing. But when it comes to the actual story, it has nothing to do with that dude. In fact, the lady, who calls herself too short for some reason but whose actual name is Veronica. She has tried so many different options in order to get rid of this paranormal catastrophe of hers, from priests to investigators, along with praying and ignoring, but it never seems to work out. In the videos, she has captured some orbs flying around, the dog staring at something inconceivable, and the kids crying at the same time every night. 
Even one night, as she and that Shane dude were communicating and asking questions, mentioning the boys, not the TV series, but rather the Veronica kids, they all of a sudden started crying out loud. Then later that night, their room door stuck, and they used the power of the love and friendship of three different people in order to break that door. How scary. I hope this lady doesn't mind me posting her video on my list, because based on the title of her video, she writes that all the rights to this content are reserved by her, but I have seen different channels featuring her. I don't know why I like the guy in the next video, but his way of pronouncing words amuses me. It's clear enough to make an old homeless man cry, but we are not here to make old people cry. Really? I thought that was the whole purpose of the video. Maybe you are right, if we put things into context, people may cry after watching this video due to the fear they will have in their hearts. Things are about to get paranormal. How cringe. Anyway, Trevor and his psychic cameraman were called by one of their friends. But why did he call them at that time of the day? Isn't it too late to call people? Doesn't he know respect? How about I give you his phone number and you can teach him some respect? Chill man, he calls them for help, as he believes his house is haunted by some demonic spirits. So that's his belief, but is it actually real? That's why Trevor is here, to expel, to find the truth, or maybe to fabricate it, as after I finished the three episode series they made on the place, I came to a conclusion, but I will talk about that after you finish the video. They came into the house ready and prepared for any ghost who had the guts to make an apparition, or even a paranormal movement. At first, they were claiming to hear some sounds. I was calm and steady, trying to hold still, but when Trevor said he saw a shadow figure crossing by, I completely lost it, and all of it came out like a flood. I was talking about my experience in the toilet, but then things got scary when the lamb moved, followed up by the closed entrance door opening. Then the ovalus was sent flying off of Trevor's hand, all until he joined me and had a demonic stomach blast. Hello everyone, I'm Trevor with Panic Attack Productions. Recently, a good friend of ours contacted us because they believe that their house is possessed by demonic spirits. 
they have asked that we come into their home to try to cast out these demonic spirits. So we are in the living room area of the house. Let's see maybe if the uh, demonic spirit can uh, throw some things because uh, it has a history of throwing things throughout this house. So let's just cut right to the chase. We want to skip all the other little bull. We want to get right to it. Throw something. Been scaring that family every night. Come on. I don't think you're strong enough. Throw something. Did you hear that? I thought I heard like a a knock or a kind of a a bang, but so it sounded like it came from the uh, back end of the house. Yeah, I don't know if it's. Uh... Should we go look or what? It could have been the house. Well, attacking. I asked it to do it again. If it is you, do it again. Make a noise for us. Boom, that was it again. Yeah, it was. I heard something very faint, but I heard it again in the back end of the house. I think we need to go check that out. That was... Oh, yeah, I did it twice. Hey. What? I just heard something in the back room again, behind us, where we just left. That room? Yes. In here? Yes. Maybe it's playing games with us. So are you playing with us? Or is there more than one demonic spirit here? It looked like down this hallway. Can you shine your camera down there so the audience can see? This is a long, dark hallway. I would have sworn I saw some sort of black figure down there, but I don't know if it's my eyes playing with me. Look, there's our suitcase. I guess they didn't even take it with them. They left all oh, their wow, suitcases they here. They didn't even finish packing. Why didn't she take her suitcase with her? You want to ask a few questions here? And then yeah, we'll... let's... So can you tell us your name? Why are you... What the hell was that? What? You are not welcomed here. That was loud. That was really loud. That came from the back of the house. Most of the activity took place. Look at all the books thrown everywhere. That is incredible. The shelves are open. There are the drawers. That is crazy. Look, the lamp is even uh, turned yeah, over. Yeah, the lamp is turned over. I feel like there's something in here with us. What the? Oh my god, did that just move? Alright, you startled me just a little bit. But I got the message. You're here. Okay, so now that we know that you're here, Come talk with us. I have a, a digital recorder here, and what we're gonna do now is what we call an EVP session. You can actually speak into this device, and later on we can go back and actually listen to what you uh, said. Who are you? Why are you here? Are you still here? What? That was the doorbell. Who in the hell could be ringing a doorbell? I don't know. Go, 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 go. Oh my God, the door is wide open. Why is the door open? This was closed. Somebody had to unlock it. That, door, that door was locked, Trevor. That door was locked. I know, that's weird. Is anyone we here? Can, we can check, we need to check the static cam. What, the camera wasn't filming the door though. But well, we can check it for audio, see if you hear any sounds or anything. See if we can hear in. someone walking in? I'm gonna ask yes and no questions, okay? You'll light it up once for no and twice for yes. Is there a spirit in this room with us right now? Did you see it? No. It blinked twice for yes. I said, is there a spirit here? It blinked twice for yes. Okay. All right. 
we need to try to stay calm so we're not freaking any anything any you know spirits. You out. do need to stay calm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So was that you? Did you ring the doorbell and did you open the front door? Light it up once for no, twice for yes. Wow. Look, look at it. Look at it. It was like multiple times there. Are you a good spirit? Oh my God! Are you kidding me? It just yanked that out of my hand. What's wrong with you, Trump? What are you doing? You smell that? I smell what? It's like a really bad odor smell or something. You smell? Can you smell it? No, I don't smell it at all. Oh God, I'm not feeling too well. That's a bad smell. How do you not smell that? I don't smell anything right now. Oh, it's so bad. It smells so bad. Let me just chill out for a second and just... Mm. I think I need to go to the bathroom. I doubt you truly desire to learn about Travers' fate post-bathroom visit. So, is it a tale of sorrow or terror? Regrettably, it's both. I don't wish for you to experience the same emotions I did after witnessing the conclusion. It was genuinely heart-wrenching. Let me try to unpack the next video as fast as I possibly can, because I have so much activity that I couldn't catch a breast. I mean, couldn't catch a breath while watching. Every time I take my eye off the monitor, I already hear him making a reaction of fear of some sort. I was like, dude, not like this. Even before he entered the place, he started hearing some strange sounds, as if someone was messing around in there. But where is the story? What's the plot? What's for dinner? When it comes to dinner, I also wish to know. But let's see what this place Ian is investigating. The abandoned Palma Sanatorium, built in 1905, the sanatorium served as a tuberculosis hospital until its closure in 1943. It's believed that many patients spent their final days within its walls. Local legends suggest that the sanatorium is haunted, with reports of shadow figures, disembodied footsteps, ghostly voices, and full-bodied apparitions. Some believe that the spirit of a young boy roams the basement halls, adding to the eerie atmosphere of the abandoned building. Now that you know the story, let's see what else our beloved explorer has discovered. First of all, it's your beloved explorer, not ours. Speak on behalf of yourself only. Okay, why are you so harsh, dude? As he got inside, he immediately started hearing strange sounds, faint voices, and women whispering, which would have driven me crazy if I were in his place. Why is that, though? Because instead of running, I would look around, trying to find the source of her voice. Do you really think I would waste a chance on an easy gift like her? Regardless, let's see what else. As Ian started taking pictures, not for his only viewer's account, but rather of the place, he caught what looked like a phantom. That same Fufu was also seen later lingering around, but this time on video, not just in pictures. The doorknob was squeaking as described, a tube hanging from the ceiling was swinging, footsteps, and a box boxing, in other words, moving. Last but not least, a ghost was so caught up in the moment he started whistling. How terrifyingly chill. I can't believe I'm about to go in here. Whoa. I just heard something in there. Hello? I don't know what the heck that was. That noise came from the second floor. Is anyone up there? Oh. What the hell is that? Okay, I was originally creeped out to go in there. Now I'm terrified. I don't see anyone in the windows. Who's up there? I keep hearing like movement in there still. Hello? <gasps> Ooh, okay, I'm hearing more noises. If that was you, could you make another sound? one of the rooms. One of the rooms I was hearing the noises. <gasps> I 
he's heard a whisper somewhere in here. Hello? Who's in here with me? Could you tell me your name? Are there other spirits here? How many are there? How many are there? Whoa, I just heard that. I don't know what that was. That scared me. It sounded like a voice, a moan, or something. Hello? Thought I may have heard somebody down here. Whoa, I got something weird on this camera. Let me try to get it again. Whoa, what the heck was that? Dude. It's like a straight up mist figure in here. Whoa. I was in this room. Hello? It was like right in this doorway and it's gone. Where'd you run off to? Get me back there. It must have went this way. Are you over here? Are you down there? <gasps> whoa! Whoa! I gotta go over there now. <gasps> Dude, it just went in this room. Holy... There's nothing. There's nothing here. Who are you? I just want to talk to you. Jeez, before I even get it out, I'm already hearing things. Hello? Okay. What the f***? Who's down there? Noises down there. Oh, holy sh! Uh, those were footsteps. Oh God! I don't know what that said. Could you say that one more time? Oh, the door knob. Something just ripped that door knob. Holy shit. Something gripped this doorknob. What the heck? I heard that. Did you just grip this doorknob? <gasps> oh, what the? What the? Oh, shit. I just felt like a force. It like pushed me to the side. I didn't feel anything. But it was like a force. It was like a force like pushing me this way. But I didn't feel anything touching me. I didn't scare you away, did I? Oh! Okay, I gotta get out of here. I'm done. I'm done for now. I'm done. I'm coming back. Jeez. Hello, is anybody up here? this metal thing whatever the heck this thing is <gasps> it's making all kinds of noise what the hell who's up here 
What is this thing anyway? It's like some kind of machine. I don't know, I can't tell what that is. If you're messing around with this thing, could you make another sound? Now I'm hearing noises up there. I hear you. Who's up here? <gasps> what? Dude! Am I going crazy or did that just move? No way! You see that? It was up against that wall. Those beams. Whoever moved this box, could you move it again? <gasps> what? Oh my god! What the hell? Are you seeing that? Oh hell no. Hell no. Screw that. I am not going over there. What the f is going on up here? <gasps> Look at that. Oh my god. I explained that. First the box, now this. I don't even know what the hell this is. There's two of them. There's two like... Oh my god. I hear all kinds of shit now. Look at this. What is this? It's like some bars. Bars swaying back and forth. Someone is up here with me right now. whistling Hello <gasps> Whoa They say that a child has been heard running down this hallway Is that you that they're hearing? Why don't you tell me your name? My name is Ian. If you're in here, could you move this ball? Holy! That was loud. Okay. Thank you for making that noise. Scary noise at that. Could you make another sound? Oh. oh my god, this kid is aggressive. What the hell? Is it even a kid at all? I don't know. <gasps> I don't know. I don't know, but it sounded high pitch. High pitch like a child. No! Oh! Like whatever's down here is toying with me. What? No way! Oh my god! What? Got a weird feeling in this room. Oh, Holy sh That was a shadow. That was a shadow. This just passed right by my camera. Holy. The investigation never stopped. If he continued recording, I think he would have still been able to capture more chilling events. Even if he leaves the place, as long as the camera is recording, the activity won't stop, even at his home.
A group of Americans were camping somewhere in the forest at night, back in the nostalgic year 2010. So they enjoyed their trip, then they ate sh I mean, they ate marshmallow around the campfire, and they had sex. Hopefully they didn't. They slept and went back home the next day. That's how a cheesy American kid's show would be, excluding the part where they did the forbidden. That would be on the adult show. But here, things have to go wrong, because if they don't, if they don't go wrong, Timmy, the balance on Earth will collapse. Women's won't give birth. Men won't stay men. People will be unable to find jobs. Sounds like I'm talking about the current situation. Before I talk about the events, let me introduce you to my deck. Sorry, I meant to say, let me introduce you to the group. Trevor, Jeremy, Tom, and the camera dude. With their super heavy Western-like accent, and the most Americans names I have ever heard, I almost started having racism flashbacks. I was scared the scary part of their video would be about slaying some dude with a dark skin. And to my surprise, it was. Well, it wasn't exactly like that, but there are some glimpses of it. So while they were camping, like any group of idiots would do when it's pitch black. See, the colors are already starting to get in the way. Some dude was staring at them with his red glowy eyes. That dude had a very dark skin that he literally disappeared in the dark, so his eyes were the only visible thing. All until he got too close to attacking one of them. At that moment, we were able to see his makeup. He had beautiful long lashes and a perfect eyeliner. How sexy. In all seriousness though, they somehow got to their boat, but not all of them. Tom, where the heck is Tom? Tom was following Jerry. Sorry, he was being followed by Jerry, the dark figure. Luckily Tom can swim, so he jumped, but guess who else can swim? Not your father, since he dropped. But Jerry can. All right, boys, this is camp in 2010 with uh, Trevor and Jeremy and Tom What's up? that I can't hardly see because it's really dark. I can't find the light on this thing, dude. Hello. It's just kind of, I see Trevor waving. Okay. <laughs> Here, I'll get my phone. Let's see me get up and get the fire. Here, oh, oh. That, that's, there he is, Tom. We're going to do some rope swing madness later, Sweet. hopefully. Jeremy, Sorry. I can't see you, buddy. But he's somewhere, there's his leg. He's somewhere in that vicinity. What would we do with the hot dogs? We need some hot dogs. <laughs> I'm hungry. It's I could go for some marshmallows, dude, for some awesome. It's our campfire. Centronella candles. Uh, you can't focus on those. I'm still trying to figure out this camera, dude. It's brand new. Did somebody poop? Not this guy. <laughs> Sorry. Trevor. Jeremy. Jeremy. <laughs> Jeremy. <laughs> Jeremy pooped. <laughs> it's just the lake. It probably is. Man, that smoke is killing my eyes. Yeah, it's pretty brutal. I swear, is this the sleeping quarters? Our candles. Yeah, the keep candles our, keep, the keep our out. bugs off of us. No tent because we're men. No tent. That's right, men. manly men. We sleep beneath the stars. Discussing stars. That's right. Man, is that a full moon? Guys, what is that? I think it is. Yeah, I think full moon night. What's what, Bradley? Seriously, guys. There's something I, really, I seriously saw something over there. Dude, Tom, did you not see it? Dude, there whatever. was something there for like two Jeremy, minutes. Trevor. Dude. It was over there. Dude, whatever, man. Man, dude, dude put some more wood on this fire. I am not going to sit here Weird. with this like, thing. Dude, I'm telling you, it was, like, it was there what? for like, like two seconds. Dude, it was probably over there. Yes, the right over there where you're shining the light in dude, that area. Been over there. there. Yes, there was, yeah. Jeremy. But the Tom and I both saw it, dude. It was probably a squirrel. It was nuts. I don't know, man. Not a squirrel. What'd you say? It was a squirrel. But it, okay. Okay. A woodland creature. Okay. What squirrel would look like that, Tom? <laughs> it, it's an animal. Okay, We're in the woods. Don't Go lose. figure. Don't, don't uh, hey, Tom. Yeah. Guys. What? Oh my God. What is that? that dude. Oh my That's God. it. That's it. I t oh my gosh. Oh. oh. Uh, what is it? I don't know. Oh, crap. Oh, oh, oh my God. God. Oh my God. Ah! Get in, get in, get in, guys. Get in, get in, get in. Okay, okay. Where's, where's the keys? I don't know. Seen it. Where's, where's Tom at? Where's Tom? Where's Tom? 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 All right, dude. We got the boat. He came over there. We'll come get you, dude. Tom. Tom. Guys, I'm over here. 
Are you alright? Thank God, are you okay? Dude, I think I lost it. I don't know. I think it's right behind me. I'm not sure. What is it, dude? What is it? I don't it? know. I you need to jump. Come on, get down here with us. You'll have to jump. Come on, get to not jump. This is too high. Dude, you if you don't jump, jump it's going to get you. You have to jump. Like, oh my gosh, ah! huh. Come on, Tom. Come on, swim, man. Swim, Tom. Swim. Swim. Oh, oh my God! Did you see it? No. No, we've not seen it. Oh my God! Oh my God! Wait, what is, dude? What is? Oh my gosh, dude! Did you see that? Thank oh my God, you're too bad. That's the same thing we've been seeing. That's it. Let's get out of here. Let's find out what that thing was. Dude, it's up there. Look. Sorry, man. Why does it keep turning? We're gonna go like right now. Now. There it is. Did you see it? Do you see it? No. No. Hold on. Oh my gosh. Did you see that? Yeah. Did you see that? 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 That is, Dude, oh I my god! about to jump in the water. Are you serious? Oh, oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh. What the heck? Oh it's chasing the boat, Tom! Go! Oh my goodness. Go! 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 I have a strong suspicion that this might have been some sort of college project or something. But regardless, if it was, then they absolutely nailed it. And if it wasn't, then Jerry probably caught them and nailed them. Have you ever heard of the ancient Ramen? Of course you have not, just like me. And if it happened that you actually did hear about this place, then get out and leave this video in peace. This video is for those who have no information and are looking for a source of knowledge. At least that's how some people would view a narrator. Anyway, what is this place? Where is it located? Can we find it on Google Maps? Does it even exist, or did you just make its name up so you could sound more professional? That last one isn't too far off the truth, but not when it comes to the next video. How is that so? You ask too many questions for someone your age, but I will answer you nonetheless. The ancient Ramen, dating back to 1145, is a renowned haunted location in Watton Under Edge, England. Built atop a pagan burial ground, it harbors a dark history of executions and alleged ritual sacrifices. Former owner John Humphreys reported decades of encounters with spirits, including physical attacks and unexplained phenomena. Its reputation as one of England's most haunted inns attracts paranormal investigators worldwide. Notable spirits said to linger include Mary Gibbons, a witch who sought refuge before her passing, and the ghosts of children and highwaymen. That's such a deep backstory, not gonna lie. But where does that play a part in the next video? Well, we have Jeff, Phil, and Mark. The Legendary Three. As they investigated this place, they really got to experience some eerie activities. Is that so? Yeah, like growling sounds, faint voices, some taps, and some movements. But when it got physical, it got serious. As you can see on your screen, one of the dudes had something to do with gravity, as he was resting on a chair inside one of the rooms alone. Trying to communicate, he sat too comfortably for his own good. Gravity played its part and reminded him that he should start eating salad. In other words, he fell off the chair. If you are back here, can you actually see the other entities, spirits that are still here? Or maybe you need to give us a warning. Because something here might do us any harm. Come and let us know, John. If there's any spirits that can hear my voice, could you come and join us at the table, please? At this moment, as I ask the spirits to come and join us, there is movement from the attic that sounds like furniture being dragged across the floor. We do not have a static cam in this area, but our static cam below in the bishop's room is capturing the sounds. Here is the audio from the static cam in the bishop's room, followed by the audio enhanced.
As I say, we've moved up into the attic. I'd like to ask if there's any spirits here with us. If they could make themselves known now, please. All seemed quiet up in the attic until we were just about to leave when this happens. Should we just, should, should we leave this stuff up here? Yeah, yeah. I think we should come back. What? Jesus! Did you hear that? No. I heard. Where oh, from? Oh, pink behind you. You made me bloody jump, Mark. That so loud. If you Jeff's recording, he's bound to have picked that up. Well, I've left the digital recorder. Jesus! Jesus! It was like. As you stood up, I heard all the noise I heard. It, uh, this is the only way I can describe it. It sounded like, like a, a raspy growl. I still keep thinking I can see you in that doorway. Come on in and hear. I just heard a voice. Yeah. Between you and me, yeah? Yeah. Like a little child's voice. It, yeah, it like I heard, yeah, part of fire between you and me. Between Phil and I, beside the fireplace, we hear a disembodied voice of a child, but we cannot decipher what is being said. Just heard a voice. Are you inside this room? Are you with us now? Come on, Mary, shout out. Shout out so I can hear your voice. If you can't shout out, can you move something inside this room for us, please? Anything at all. What's the matter, Phil? The chair just moved. Your chair moved? Right on cue. Ace. That's weird. I just seen a black shadow by you to your right hand side, Phil, on the wall. Is that you, Mary? See it back down. If it was, thank you for that. Phil's chair moves, and then there is running outside on the stairs. So you moved uh, Phil's chair? Is there anything that we can do for you? Can you hear me, Mary? I ask Mary if she can hear me and the digital recorder picks up an angry voice replying back to me. Can you hear me, Mary? The black shadow figure that's seen in here. Can you show yourself to me? It feels like there's something behind me. Some My hair. Are you, are you behind me? Come forward. Ah, oh, Jeff! Ah! Jeff! Oh, 
What was it? Someone, someone pulled me off the chair. Oh, s***. Got, got me shoulder in. Why's the music box going? Oh, what the f***. The music box was going before I got here as well. Yeah. It feels like there's something behind me, some... My hair. Are you, are you behind me? Come forward. Oh, s***. Jet, ah! Can you make yourself known to me, please? Or indeed, Scouse. If you're here, make yourself known. Yeah, it was banging from downstairs. Did you hear that? Yeah. That's loud. It's bottles. I don't know about the chair scene. I'm not certain whether I can call it paranormally caused or not, but based on another scene where one of them felt touched, it could most likely be caused by a spirit of some sort. When I was young, like when I was a little kid, and don't worry, I see that facial expression of boredom on you. I'm not going to bring out all the good memories and talk about it instead of the actual video. Don't worry, my child. Then, what will you be talking about? Well, since you brought up this, I really didn't think I would have to make an apology and change my narrative. I thought I could get away if I talked about some of my history, but basically, back then, when I went to my grandma's house, I was always excited to take all the pillows available and build all sorts of stuff, especially since my grandma had a lot of them. But why did you mention that? I'm glad you asked. I never thought someone would care enough to ask me. I mentioned that because our friend in the next video is named Simone. He is an Italian guy, but let's forget about his nationality for a second and focus on his grandma's house. She claims to have had a paranormal experience in her house. She says it's haunted, so should we believe her? Or should we find her location and get the job done with her for good? Well, if we were living in the medieval ages, then the second option would have worked out just fine. But since we are not, let's see if what she had to say is actually true. That's why we have our descendant, Simone, who will complete his mission by staying some nights there. And by doing so, since he already did it, we came to the conclusion that she was telling the truth. After the TV turning on, on its own, times and times again, objects being thrown while Simone is sleeping, some shadow figures peeking, scratching sounds, door slamming, and the chandelier swinging, she was telling the truth.
Credo dovresti vergognarti. Lo sai da quanto ti stiamo... Io ragazzi non so davvero che cosa... Che cazzo stia succedendo? Anche perché cazzo sto dormendo in piedi. Io voglio solo... Oh, va bene. Lascia perdere. Di che parlate? Ci racconti qualcosa di te, Akisa? Che farai dopo il diploma? Brava come sei, tutte le squadre ti vorranno ingaggiare per farti partecipare ai campionati. Adesso sta con la spina. Sono a casa di mia nonna. Allora, non so se sentite, praticamente sono a casa di mia nonna da solo. E, e non so se sentite, ci sono un sacco di rumori che vengono da di sopra. Tenshi che di solito non fa queste cose però siccome eh, ci, ci sono in mezzo si sente un sacco cioè, non so che cacchio se cioè, forse st... cioè, adesso sembra che i rumori siano di sotto
direi che vado via perché nei film consiglio sempre questa cosa qua quindi non sono, non sono più stupido non, ti giuro non, riesco, vi giuro non riesco neanche a parlare oggi perché praticamente non era lì The story goes that the haunting of this house wasn't an arbitrary occurrence, stemming from a tale involving a scarf won by grandma at a church raffle, peculiar as that may sound. However, what confuses me is why these shadowy figures appear rather chunky and less authentic than anticipated. When you come back home after a long day of work, you really just want to lay down, get some rest, bang something, and then think about how miserable the next day could be. That's a lot of how the lives of adults are like, unfortunately, and don't get me started on these taxes and bills, because then I might just change the whole topic of this video, which is something I don't want to do and that you never wish to hear. Mike is a guy who lives with both his wife and his dog, somewhere near the woods, or more like, in the middle of the woods. Whether he was living in the woods or near my bathroom, what happened to him that other night? What night? I never mentioned the time of day when the incident happened. Maybe it took place in the daytime. Didn't you say he was back from work, which usually happens around nighttime? What if he works the night shift? What will you do then? How pathetic. Never make a decision before listening. Anyway, as he was back from work, his wife just left the house. Why did he have to cause trouble and force her to leave like that? No matter how harsh his day was, he should never make trouble with his wife and let her leave like that. She had nothing to do with his bad day at work. Didn't I tell you to never make decisions too early? She left for her night shift. Mike heard some noises outside the house. He went to explore with Siggy to see if he could possibly find their source, but he found nothing. Wait, didn't you say his wife just left the house? Yes, I said that. Then, who is Siggy? That's the dog. Siggy was barking at something mysterious. On their way back, they found what looked like leftovers of demonic rituals near the house. I got home, I don't know, a half hour ago, 45 minutes ago. The wife left almost immediately after. She's got the night shift. So I was sitting here, playing some games, watching some TV. And the dog will not quit freaking out. Hey Siggy, do you want to go outside? Now you're all scared. What's out there? Somebody out there? Are you hearing it too? So I'm hearing like a weird whistle and stuff coming from out there. So, got my boots on. And we're gonna go check. Who's out here, huh? Let's see. 
Okay. Hey, come on. Come here, you chicken. Well, you got something? Take what she got now. Yo. Whoa. There's a fire over here. Holy it's candles. Siggy! Come here. What the f Siggy, holy sh you scared me. What the puppy? Oh, oh Hold on. You got your one, two, three, four, five burning candles. Siggy, were you just barking at them? Who was here? Holy You are the worst guard dog. What? Oh my god, she's playing like there's something here. I gotta go. What in the f If I see that near my house, I'm telling you, I'm taking a whole week off work just to try to catch those who are conducting these rituals. I'm never letting them slip off my sleeves. This could literally ruin the whole property, causing me to leave. When talking about gin attacks and physical encounters with these entities, it's always important to remind others to stay protected at all times. Why? So you wouldn't have to make babies out of gin. Who mentioned anything about making a family with the gin? I meant to stay protected from any possible physical attacks that could land on you. Wait a minute, can they even get married to humans? Are you still on that topic? I told you, I didn't mean that kind of protection, but I will answer you anyway. I think humans can somehow get married to the djinn. Now that you know that, are you willing to proceed and propose to one? I mean, are you ready for what to come? I'm hyping you up as if the next video were to send shivers down your spine. But who knows, it could somehow. We have the team of Saya, Shahid, his friend, and the other guy. How detailed. You're such an impressive source of information. So they entered this house looking for any possible gin encounters, no gear, no protection, just their cameras, flashlight, and their bare hands. It sounds fair to me. As they were looking around, one of these rooms caught their eye and seduced them. What or who was inside of it that made them so attracted? Nothing and definitely no one. But its door couldn't hold still, it kept moving and slamming shut. 
Even when they were somewhere else, it was still active, which led their curiosity to reach a new level, so they decided to take an even closer look on their way out, and for some reason, one of them, let's call him Tamer, was the last one to leave the room, and he paused on the entrance and slowed himself down, as if he were saying, come on Jin, slam me from the back, and so he received the treatment he asked for. He fell down so dramatically that it made me tear up. Inside that room, the window cabinets were also swinging. The faucets were opening on their own. The small water tank was also in action. Remember how Tamer fell down? Now let's see the skills Shahid has. As he was going downstairs, he found himself staring at one of the ugliest, scariest looking creatures, which sent him into a coma. Did he actually encounter you? Maybe. अच्छा शायद ऊपर भी एक रूम उन्होंने कहा था कि है तो यार ये ये दरवाजा बंद हुआ है शायद दरवाजा बंद हुआ है नहीं मुझे तो लगता है खुरम भाई वैसे खुद ही हुआ होगा देखो अंदर जाके ये दरवाजा मुझे लगा बंद हुआ है नहीं कुल भाई मुझे लगता है कि ये आपका वहम ही है कोई एक मिनट ये आपको आवाज है दरवाजा बड़ी जोर से बन गया शायद इधर से आवाज है हाँ कोई यार में याद है हम ये दे, ये दे। इसी के बंद होने की आवाज आई है ये खुला छोड़ के गए थे हम अभी मेरा ख्याल है कि बिल्कुल ये ठीक कह रहा है कि हमें ऊपर की जानब जाना चाहिए ऊपर साइन तो हमें इधर भी मिल रहे हैं इधर भी मिल रहे हैं लेकिन ऊपर का वैसे हमने पोर्शन देखा नहीं देखते हैं देखते हैं चले ग्रुप आप ही हो शायद देखी तो नहीं है ये कैसे बंद हुआ है मुझे समझ आ रही है ये हमारे साथ ना खेल रहे हैं मैंने आपको पहले भी बोला है कि हमारा आपको तंग करने का मकसद नहीं है आप हमें बगैर नुकसान बगैर कोई नुकसान पहुँचाए हमारे सामने आए हमारा कतल ही ये नहीं है कि हम आपको परेशान करें यही दरवाजा लगा है ना बहुत जोर से लगा है मुझे पता चल गया क्या इसी दरवाजे से आपको मसला है ना ये मैं आपके सामने खड़ा हूँ बगैर कोई नुकसान को जाए आए हमारा मैंने पहले भी आपको बोला कि मेरा कोई मकसद नहीं है आपको तंग करना ये देखा ये देखे ये खिड़की खुली हुई थी अल्लाह अल्लाह पर हमें पता है कि आप यहाँ मौजूद हैं हमें कोई बगैर नुकसान पहुंचाए हमारा हमें अपना जहर होना दिखाए पूरम एक मिनट एक मिनट खिड़की खुल गई है इधर खिड़की खुल गई उधर दरवाजा बंद मुझे लगता है कि एक मिनट एक मिनट हम फंस गए मैं से मैं मैं एक मिनट एक मुझे लग रहा है कि वे ये खिड़की मुझे लगता है कि खुरम इन्होंने हमें इन्होंने हमें घेर लिया है और 
Allah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. Chalo, hai, hai. Inhone mein na mujhe lagta hai ki ye ek minute, ek minute, ek minute. Astaghfirullah हमें पता चल गया आप इधर हैं लेकिन आप कोई हमें मजीद हमारे सामने तो आएं मैंने बोला ना कि जिन्नात का ही खेल है ये देखो मैं भी बंद करके गया हूँ मैंने जो बोला है ना ये जिन्नात का ही खेल है जो हमें यहाँ पर जाने से ये हमें जाने पर मजबूर कर रहे हैं ताकि हम इधर से चले जाएं भजन साथ साथ ही हैं हमारे ये बिल्कुल हमारे खुरम बिल्कुल हमारे साथ साथ हैं जहाँ पर हम जाते हैं ये उधर कोई ना कोई क्लू हमें दे रहे हैं खुरम ये देखो ये कौन बैठा है यार ओए क्या क्या हुआ खुरम 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 क्या हुआ हम शाहिद क्या हुआ खुरम को खुरम उठो खुरम शाहिद मुझे लगता है कि इन्होंने कुछ देख लिया है और इन्होंने अपना आप दिखा दिया है खुरम को The fact that someone was called Shahid at the end and the same call out when Tamer fell down earlier make me question who is actually Shahid. I know for a fact that he wasn't the dude who wasn't attacked. I'm not a man to talk about challenges to be honest. Wait, so are you finally admitting that you're not a man? I didn't mean it this way, but whatever. So, when it comes to committing to completing a challenge, I wouldn't talk much, but when you dare to say that you have accomplished your mission with a completion and you tape that, but you're lying, then you're caught off guard. And by whom? The one and only spicy horror. How terrifying. What will you do about it, tough guy? But before you know what my actions will be, don't you want to know what I am talking about in the first place? So we have Chris, the man who unlike me doesn't like to waste any time and get right into it. He challenged himself to not beat the meat. Is that all you could think of? No, but rather to dare step into the abandoned trailer and stay in it for 30 minutes while filming and investigating around. Amazing. 
So how did it go then? Not very well, as I tried to let it out for her, but it didn't want to stand and perform for me that night, so she left me in the corner, confused and depressed. Chris, on the other hand, was also not doing well for himself. He kept freaking out because he was feeling as if someone was playing some tricks on him, as if someone was messing with him, when clearly, at least to us, there was no one in there other than him. He was hearing whistlings while also feeling trapped inside, because from what we heard, there were sounds of objects being moved and doors shutting on their own. Or how about someone messing up on the ceiling? It got really freaky in there. In that back room, that's freaky, so I'm just gonna make sure it's okay. It's okay, nobody's back here. Hello? All right, that, what the f is that? Hello? Hello? All right, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go out of here. I swear, somebody's out of here. Hello? Oh, Jesus Christ. Hello? Hello? All right, I really don't know where the hell to go. I'm coming, see? I hear that whistle again. There's that whistle again. Whoa. All right, I just came out of here. That was not here. This string was not here. Oh, what the f is that? Did you see that? Did you see that? The door is closed. Hello? Oh man, this is just stupid. Hello? All right, if anybody's there, I'm coming in there. Hello? Hello? Look at that, look at that. That's gotta be from me, throwing the door open, right? Is anybody here? Man, this door is closed. A little. Oh, me, dude. Somebody here? Hello? Hello? I hear it again. I hear whistling. I hear whistle. I hear whistling. I hear whistling. All right, I'm gonna take a second here and just gather myself. I hear whistling again. I think I heard, yeah, I definitely heard that last time we were here. And they, look, the door just closed. The door closed. Hello? around this way because this is scary as Okay, okay, okay. Hello? Hello? Look at this. I don't know what to do, man. I hear you. I hear you. Yes. I hear you. Is Samantha? Okay. All right, this is weird. Okay. Okay. All right, so I keep I keep hearing whistling and it sounded like a girl again speaking to me, but the craziest thing is is I just I hear whistling. But I I just had this calm sense come over me which is it's gonna be very short-lived, I can tell you that much. This is just a bad idea. All right, let's go see what we can get into down here. Or not get into. Hey, listen, I'm a friendly dude. I'm not looking to hurt anybody. I just am here. Recording. This, this is just the craziest room. Oh, man, oh, Jesus. Hello. Hello? Okay. Okay. Somebody's here. I know somebody's here. And I'm cool with it. I'm alright. I'm not here to hurt you. Please don't hurt me. Okay. What the f is this shit, man? 
What the fuck, man? What the fuck, man? What the Alright, alright, alright. Alright. I don't know if you can see it, but that noose, excuse me, excuse my language, is on the front door. When I was inside, I felt like somebody was right next to me the whole time. Even when I ran out to the back. something fell out of the tree okay but out here I feel good oh no I don't no I don't no I don't no I don't no I don't, no, I don't. <sighs> who doesn't need better buns whoa Did I bump something? Did I bump something? I bumped something. Okay. All right, let's head back around here. Okay. Hello? Okay. All right. Okay. Listen to this. Listen to this. How much time? 20 minutes. I got 10 more minutes. I'm not gonna make it. I'm not gonna make it. That was me. I had no. That was not me. Okay. All right. That was not me. That was me. Okay. So yeah. I don't know. He said he completed the 30 minute challenge, but based on what I have, the information provided says he didn't actually. Wait, don't tell me you were the one who was messing with him in there. Nope, that would be his buddy, but the video itself wasn't actually 30 minutes long. Have you ever wondered, what do introverts do when they feel like the loneliness they have isn't enough to feed their need to feel isolated? That's a very interesting question, and allow me to say that if you have ever had some inner thoughts as such, then you definitely have more free time than you think, because who in this world would think of such things? But even if you never asked yourself this question, I will give you an answer that will definitely give you at least an idea of what these types of people would do and the approach they could take. Basically, they have to find a place outside their creative box, somewhere empty and cold, where no humans could possibly think of visiting. But since we are living in an era where these places have become the most visited physically and non-physically, it's no longer their first option. Wait, how come people visit these places without actually going there? Have you ever heard of the internet? When people make a trip to explore these places, they also allow others to visualize what they are like from the inside. So we are talking about an investigation taking place in an abandoned Pizza Hut restaurant. I didn't mention anything about the Pizza Hut, but you're correct, that's the building we will be taking a look at. Tom and his girlfriend decided to go there after their friend told them about his experience there, encountering a possible creature in the back freezer of the establishment. They drove, they walked, and so they reached, but they didn't enter, they had to sneak their way inside so the police couldn't catch them. Of course, who would be doing the forbidden in an abandoned restaurant? Forbidden. I meant they were there to investigate, not for anything else. Remember what their friend told them earlier, and the introvert I talked to you about? That's exactly the terrifying encounter who sent Tom scurrying out of this place. Okay, so we're en route to the abandoned, I believe it's a Pizza Hut. I'm actually not positive what it used to be because I don't live exactly right around here, but a uh, good friend of mine went in there and uh, he was just exploring and in the, the back freezer, he said he saw some kind of creature. He didn't know what it was when he saw it. Hey, park over here in this lot. He uh, he ran because he was so scared. And that was a couple days ago. So I'm not convinced what the best point of entry is because there's this busy street back here. I don't want to be seen. Is he 
can see it's pretty deserted. There used to be a drive through window of some kind. I don't know if they sold slices or whole pizzas in the drive through And then there was kind of a buffet area in here. Some knocked over tables. I don't really know what happened here. I don't know why they shut it down. Maybe it was a health rating or just not enough business. Yeah, I, I, I've never been here before. I don't know. So we narrowly made it in. This place is empty. Doesn't look up to code. Or that. Use that drive through area. Alright, here, why don't you go check out over here? I'm gonna take a look back here. Yell if you need me. It sure is dark. Probably no wonder they got shut down. I mean, just look at that. I don't think this would meet any code. Just all kinds of deposits on the Look at that. What the hell it was we saw in there. Unfortunately, I don't think I closed the freezer, so it's probably free to move around inside the whole building now. So when I got there, it was closed up. And I think that's how uh, that's how Ken said he left it last time after he saw it. He has, when he ran out of there, he made sure it was closed up. In the end, you got your answer to a question you would never have thought of. This is where you might find introverts sometimes. But remember folks, this video was recorded in 2016, when this was still a trend. Before I introduce you to our friend Matt in the next clip, let me give you some very simple advice. Never open a door to strangers at night. And when you want to throw out, make sure you do it in the wash basin, not in the toilet. Now let's talk about Matt. Matt is a man who has a girlfriend, so we know we are dealing with a lost man. One night, while he was watching his security camera, he noticed a guy with a trash bag in his hand outside his house. For some reason, Matt was scared of him. As if he has never seen a garbage man before in his life. But this garbage man left the bag and immediately ran into Matt's house, knocking on his door aggressively. Now if you're like me do, you will also be scared. But let me calm you down, just let me grab the lotion while you take off your pants and feel comfortable. I had this accident before, it does look scary from the security camera perspective, and the aggressive knocking may also sound like someone is attacking your property. But it's actually diarrhea. Yes folks, that's what we do when nature calls and diarrhea kicks in. We find the closest house and we try to break in just to use the bathroom. But Matto took it too far after the incident. He called his girlfriend and she ghosted him. But at the end of the day, he begged her to play the Ouija board with him, and so they did. But you can see she wasn't so nice to him during the Ouija session. She even walked on him before saying goodbye, which resulted in poltergeist activity. Like banging on the walls, which could be his girlfriend, you just have to check all the rooms to make sure. The curtains moving, the pants falling. I mean, the paintings, the paintings falling. His budget gaming keyboard on the floor. His chairs are going 30 miles per hour. And one last thing. I don't know what accent this man has, but the way he says house and out, it just makes me laugh so loud my neighbor called the police on me. 
He did that for one other reason. I'm pretty sure my house is 100% haunted. People were telling me that me and my girlfriend didn't close the Ouija board properly in my last video, and that we basically invited spirits into my house. We did say goodbye to the board, but at this point we already had our hands off once, and apparently you can't take your hands off until the board says goodbye back to you. We tried to use the board again to see if we could properly close the session, but we weren't able to contact anyone, and the piece never moved. And then yesterday, this happened. Okay, something just knocked over my chair again. I'm honestly getting sick and tired. Um... What? Hello? Is there anybody here? If you're here, do something. Uh... No! I've had a lot of people reach out to me and try and give me tips on how to deal with the ghost. And I just want to give a big thank you because some of the things are helping. I did sage my house, and when the ghost is present, I'm trying to be as fearless as I can and tell the ghost to get out. The past couple days a lot less things are happening, which is good. Normally like 10 or more things happen every day, so there's a lot that happens off camera. But this clip here is one of the two things that happened yesterday. And that number's way lower than it used to be. I was just chilling and this light just knocked over, just randomly. Are you still here? Do something if you're still here. Um, <laughs> get out of my house, please. You are, you are not welcome here. Get out of my house. Get out. There's literally somebody outside like dragging a bag at my work. No, sorry, I'm just recording in case something happens. I, I can't see, I can't see his face. Where's he coming? He's literally running down to the door. He's coming up to the door right now. Is he, ah! Oh my God. He's, he's outside the door. He's outside the door right now. No, there's nowhere to hide in here. I'm literally, it's just this one room. The door, yeah, the door is locked, but. Oh my fuck. He's like behind the building now. I don't, I don't, can you just get here, please? So me and my girlfriend were messing around with the Ouija board. It spelt out the word car, and I instantly thought about my random odd videos. We stopped playing after that because it kind of started to freak us out a little bit. Our fingers are barely on it. It literally just spelled out car. I'm not doing this anymore. Just later that night at around like 4 a.m. I got woken up by something really, really loud in the next room. It is literally like 4 a.m. And I just got woken up by the loudest like crashing noise in my other room. Do what? What the f My chair, my paintings, my keyboard, what? Okay, no. I'm starting to think whatever was at those random not locations followed me home. His girlfriend attempted to rectify the situation by attempting to close the game again, but their efforts were in vain. However, let's consider if it was the guy who walked out without closing the game, he would likely be accused of domestic violence. They say wherever you go, you leave a mark. And I thought this would just make you feel as if I'm about to break down the deepest story you'll ever hear. But in reality, I was just being cheesy. Also, teasing up for what to come. For me, when I look at abandoned factories, I always tell myself, I wish I could actually be able to investigate them, look around the leftovers, and feel the creepiness of the environment. Then, why haven't you tried entering one and investigating? Are you too scared? Or does your government have laws against such activities? Well, I just can't see, so I wouldn't be able to tell what it is. And with one lie out of the way, let's take a look at the next abandoned factory warehouse. Are we actually going to take a look at it? No, I meant, let's talk about it. The investigation was conducted by Colton and Casey, and they kicked it off with an EVP session. They seemed to have captured some interesting sounds. Sounds like what? 
I don't know, that's why I use the word interesting instead of explaining specifically what sounds they have captured. Very unprofessional so far. Then they went to the bathrooms, where they seemed to have heard sounds like door slamming, and the moment they opened the door to check these bathrooms, I felt very emotionally charged. I felt frenzy, like I had finally found the lost love of my life. Are you into toilets? Not literally. But what did the investigators find there? Oh yeah about that, they found the doors all swinging at once. The moment Casey tried to see what's behind one of these toilet doors, some heavy shattering sound came out of nowhere, followed up by a faint voice. Later, a fire extinguisher was thrown on the ground. While doors were slamming somewhere, tapping sounds were still a thing. Casey and Colton took some pictures, only to find what looked like a strange looking phantom. Somebody in this room like to come and talk with us? Maybe you don't like the lights. I can cut the light out. See if you can stay focused on that once the light goes out. Can you light that device up? Hear all sorts of noises in here. Maybe it was uh, wildlife. You know, there are rats, pigeons, bats in places like this, but we were definitely hearing some sounds. Dude, it is like pitch black in here. Oh yeah, I can't see a f***ing thing on this camera. The only thing I can see is the light sensor from, mm -hmm. from your camera bouncing off. We checked one bathroom, there was a couple stalls in there, very, very old looking, and I walked across from that bathroom area, there was another bathroom. Oh! Dude. Colton and I were walking around this factory for maybe 45 minutes to an hour. Haven't seen anything move, haven't seen anything crazy. I turn a corner and just three doors closing at the same time. All I felt was like a slight gust of wind this way. All three of the bathroom stalls in there just closed and then the door slammed in my face. Was it a gust of wind? No. All three of them closing at the same time? Why wouldn't they be moving right now? glass all over the place in here. Dude, I'm getting a reading now. Goosebumps, bro. Did you hear that? That was the Did you hear that? What it sound like? It sounded like voices. No. It wasn't a conversation, it was like two words. Really? Yeah. You see? Did it I'm sound sure like more it. than one person talking? It sounded like two tones of voice, yeah. I don't like that at all. What the f was that, bro? Where did that just come from? I have no idea. Did you trip on something? No, that was way past those. That was on the ground over there. Let's get uh, EVP reporter. Rembots. Let's bring all that back here. Yeah. What the f dude? All right, here, you got the light. You lead the way. Yeah, let's go. Ow. Do you smell flowers? Like, 
Like potpourri? Something sweet, something, yeah. You hear that? What's that? Dude, I... I it's you heard that? It smells like roses in here or something. Yeah. Okay, we're being toyed with now, bro. There's something. Hydrant at the area. Yeah. The mm -hmm. bathroom, yeah. What is that? What was that? That's trippy, dude. What it... was that one of the ones from the beginning? Or is that the long shot? What the hell is that? I don't know. See on the camera, but this one, that's another one of those. What the hell, bro? That one's crazy. Nothing in the bathroom? Mm -mm. They say that in this warehouse facility, there have been some instances of people hearing echoes of machinery sounds, as if these machines were still functioning. I can understand the gin hunting a place, but why would they hunt machines? The amount of mystery and frustration surrounding the man in the next clip is absolutely amusing. I'm not over-exaggerating here. This dude goes by the name username Huzero on social media, and if you search for him, good luck finding his account. You may find his videos, but not his own account. He was there once, but now he is a shell of himself. I don't think that's the right way to describe him in this situation, but you got the message. Let's name him Jack. Jack is a dude who lives in a haunted apartment. The apartment is smaller than your brain, so you can imagine if you could how small it is. It's clean nonetheless, at least before the paranormal activity takes place. As I also found out, Jack has moved into this apartment after dealing with enough paranormal activity in his previous property. But surprise surprise, he was once again greeted with more ghostly hauntings. This dude must be blessed or something, as he would be sleeping or doing some censored activities on his laptop at night. His door would be closed. That's crazy. I thought his room door would be opened. Before you make fun of the situation, understand that he only locked the door so the ghost wouldn't get to him. How can locking a door prevent any spirit from getting to any place, not just Jack's room? I also asked my brain the same question, but we as humans do that as a reflex action to calm ourselves down so our hearts don't stop from fear. Jack's bedroom door knocks very aggressively every night, trying to seduce him to come out, and when he does, it all falls apart. The faucet opens, and the forks, plates, pans, and anything else in the kitchen get thrown to the floor. The lights keep switching on and off, only when Jack returns to his bedroom to find the chairs moving. How sadly scary. Hey, tak. Chyba od pół godziny cały czas coś na panawczy. Kurwa dzieje. Ja. Yeah. 
Ej, ja pierdolę, naprawdę już mam dość, cały czas słyszę, jakby mi coś kurwa dział po przedpokoju, już naprawdę mam dość, nie mogę spać. Jak widzicie, specjalnie poprzesuwałem wszystkie rzeczy, bo kurwa, mam już dość patrzenia na te pierdolone drzwi. Ja pierdolę. Nie. O kurwa, co jest? O. Nie. O. Dzisiaj tak spędzam noc. Was nowy. O f***, what the f***, what the f***, wow! What the f***? Kurwa! Scary. Cały czas coś właśnie takie dziwne hałasy. Ja pierdolę, co to? Jak? Co to? What? Nie, ja pierdol... Co jest kurwa? Whoa! I often find myself mistaking this guy for someone else I featured a while back. Their recording styles are quite similar and even their bedrooms look almost the same. However, the other guy has a large house, not a small apartment like this one. I'm not going to lie, because I never have. You know me, I'm such an honest person. Anyhow, the next video really left me confused, as I'm trying to figure out what is what and who is who, and it turns out I was the father. Wait, father of who? Aren't you talking about the next clip? 
I suppose, or I was so, but what left you confused? Well, his skin color and his overall facial expression don't seem to match me at all. Oh, you were asking about the next clip. Sorry then. What left me confused was the fact that there have been three dudes involved in making the next documentary, and I don't even know when the clip of the guy kicks in. Then just tell us the story and we will surely figure things out for ourselves with our 150 IQ. Yeah, sure buddy. Hear me out. The backstory presented revolves around a mysterious chest in Watnabe's grandmother's house. Watnabe recalls being strictly instructed never to open the chest door by their grandmother. However, during a visit, Watnabe discovered the door ajar and witnessed their grandmother looking at an unsettling photo album, which she later concealed behind the chest door. The album contained eerie photos, including images of Watnabe's grandmother when she was young, and creepy dolls. After seeing the album, Watnabe fell ill and was hospitalized. Later, a guy named Kaneko takes on the mission and starts his own investigation of the place. He retrieves the camera left by that Watnabe guy, then leaves the place said to have passed the torch to another dude named Meguro. At this point, I was like, where and what is happening here exactly? Maybe I also had something to do with this video, and I was investigating this house in my daydreams. Meguro is the one who encountered the figure. Watnabe is the one who fell unconscious. Kaneko heard the sounds, and I left the house. The question remains, out of the three dudes who took on the mission to explore this house, which one of them left a static camera? That's the one thing left to be uncovered. friend Ted in the next video is dealing with the haunting of a ghost in his very precious and beautiful house. It seems almost as if you are about to enter into some forbidden relationship with the house. Does it really seem that way to you? Then let me continue, because after you watch the clips, you might also end up somewhere like me. 
At first, I thought this was his house, all until I realized that was just the basement, which has undergone a lot of reconstruction and redecoration, which makes it look almost like a fancy apartment. After I watched the videos, I took a look around me and said to myself, is that really how it is? And I'm the one who thought I lived in heaven, but these garbage bags aren't so comfy after all. Wait, are you saying that you live on the streets? Not literally. Let's go back to Ted, who was complaining about the paranormal situation. Why would you men? Do you really expect to take over someone else's apartment and then live like nothing happened? What do you mean? Are you claiming that this house isn't Ted's and that he stole it from someone else? No, what I'm saying is that we are all scared of the basement, whether it is haunted or not, so 9 out of 10 houses have a ghost haunting situation in their basement, according to my personal knowledge. So when you decided to make a whole apartment out of that area, did you expect these ghosts to stay silent? Of course not, they will come after you dude. So, what are we dealing with here? The closed cabinets will be opened, and the opened ones will be closed. The electricity in the bathroom. Forget about it. What about the water faucets? They will all be running non-stop. And obviously, we can't forget about the figures lurking behind the glass wall. Okay, TikTok. I'm gonna show you guys this basement. And all the... creepy stuff that's been happening here. This is the bathroom I passed earlier where there was some shadow figure standing, supposedly. I've watched it. It's creepy. That's creepy. But anyway, there is nothing in here to make a shadow stand at all in this bathtub. I have a, that's to the pipes outside. Bathtub, shower, have a window right here. And, uh, what the f was that? Okay, so here's the thing. This house has been creeping me out for the longest time already. And we haven't lived here, but maybe, I don't know, two years. It's just, I swear to God, I don't like it. Uh, I mean, if there's anyone that can be hiding behind this thing over here, I guarantee it. I don't know how to, I mean, <laughs> I have a two-year-old son upstairs. You would have heard these doors open, surely. Nobody on this side. You can see my big butt standing on this side so no one can get out. And of course, some of the cabinets are closed yet again. Oh God. You know, I'm just about to, uh, looks like the light is now off in the bathroom. So that's kind of creepy. And I have to go in there to turn it on. Okay, looks like there's nobody in here yet. Nobody hiding in the bathtub. Let's uh, check the shower here. I mean, I have to show you nobody's there. Turn the light on with the camera not moving. That towel was freaking me out TikTok I'm telling you what what's going on TikTok we're back in my basement uh, my fiance has been hearing some noises down here water running actually this door has been moving so it's been kind of creepy I'm really not sure what I'm looking for um, a lot of you guys want to know why I don't have electric I do have electric down here we just had the power off in this main room because it was getting remodeled we still have the breakers on for the laundry room and for the bathroom. Those doors, as you know, that's my pantry. That's my, uh, that's water running. What that is. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah, we're not, we're not with that right now. We'll just leave those on. Open, I mean. Um. See, even with the lights on, guys, it's still... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where anyone would be hiding. Not behind the door. I think the water turned on again. Or that could be upstairs. Um, man, I don't want to go in there again. Yeah, I'll show you guys, see if there's... Oh, God. Nope, that is the water. That is the water. Okay. 
So that's uh, not good. There is absolutely nobody in here. The theme he chose for this decoration is perfect for creating a peaceful retreat away from the noise. That is, until you start dealing with a different kind of noise. Imagine having to move out after putting in all the hard work to make this basement look this fancy. Let's talk about Lissandro, whom I like to nickname the Lizard. Such a cool name you just gave him. He must be such a cool dude with many different talents and skills, and maybe he is naturally gifted, because you wouldn't be complimenting someone on the internet randomly like that. Why do you like to jump to conclusions so fast? I was neither complimenting nor insulting him. I was just describing him based on how I've seen him in his videos. As things stand, he is still a guy, but maybe in a couple of months, he will be complete, and I may never recognize him again. Why? What are you even talking about? Well, forget about my opinion for a second, and let's see what this Lissandro dude has for us. As he was recording himself complaining about the paranormal activity on his property, the chair behind him caught him off guard. Who caught who? The chair caught Lissandro. From all the stupid things you have said before, this has to be up there, on top of the most stupid. How did a static object like the chair catch a human off guard? Well, the chair noticed the dude holding up the camera in a perfect position for others to watch the video, take a screenshot of it to use as a thumbnail, and put a title. This dude was recording himself moments before this happened behind his back. The chair moved in other words. While he is sitting, he keeps hearing noises from the bathroom. Sometimes he gets even stuck in there. Not literally, the door just closes on him. His bedroom handle couldn't handle itself, seeing the whole place as active and full of demons, so it joined the party and started shaking. The crutches he has, for some reason, fell on their own. But why did you call him a lizard? Once you watch the full clips in the order in which I placed them for you, you will understand. Amigo, ¿te acordás que te dije que tengo un espíritu en mi casa, chabón? Mira la silla. ¿Qué, boludo? ¡Ay, qué impresión, amigo! Se están escuchando ruidos que vienen del baño, amigo, te lo juro, y estoy solo acá. Mira. ¿Quién sos? ¿Quién sos? What the fuck? No, 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 no. Son las 3 de la tarde y tengo un espíritu que, que me está moviendo toda la casa, amigo. O sea, se está moviendo la mesa. No estoy loco, boludo, miren. Mirá lo que está pasando. Mirá lo que posta. O sea, miren lo que está pasando de verdad. No es joda, boludo. ¿Quién sos? ¿Quién sos? ¿Qué querés? Ah. 
amigo, estoy solo en mi casa y hay alguien que me quiere abrir la puerta. Estoy solo, vivo solo, chabón. Y se está abriendo la manija, es returbio, mirá. ¿Quién está ahí? ¿Quién quiere abrir la puerta? ¿Quién está ahí? Para la gente que no, para la gente que no me cree, están empezando a pasar cosas, se están moviendo cosas en esta casa. ¿Ok? Hace muchísimo tiempo que armé una serie. Ya hay tres capítulos subidos a YouTube y lo pueden encontrar como Crónicas de un Pibe. Es una serie documental de mi caso paranormal que lo estoy subiendo cada episodio a YouTube llamado Crónicas de un Pibe. La gente que no me crea o que piensa que todo lo que estoy haciendo es falso, que vaya a ver la serie documental Crónicas de un Pibe a YouTube. Ya hay tres episodios y estoy filmando el cuarto episodio de mi documental sobre esta casa de... Aparece espíritu en vivo. ¿Escuchan, boludo? Uy, para que estoy pisando la ouija con la silla, boludo. Bueno, nada, esta es la ouija. ¿Quieren que juguemos a la ouija? ¿Quieren que juguemos a la ouija? Pero banquen, yo juego a la ouija con una condición. ¡Con una puta condición! I think now you understand what I meant when I called him a lizard. And in case you're still wondering, how about you start a rehab session with yourself? This dude had different forms throughout the videos. The way the investigator Ahmed expressed his fear with his voice in the next video made me tingle. It truly made me laugh and turned the scary vibe off for a moment. The way his vocals and tone change are truly something else. So are you going to tell us what he had to go through or just explain how he made you giggle unintentionally? Of course, I will tell you what happened to him, but why not tell you how I also figured out the best way to hold your stomach after eating too much junk food? Anyways, Ahmed and the Sheik, a story that doesn't seem to have come to an end. Both returned to the house where they had countless encounters before. The House of Mannequins, as I would like to call it, because there are many of them in there. As they ventured their way inside, the strange noises and bangings began on the upper floor. On their way up, Ahmed caught one leg dropping on the floor. A leg you say? Whose leg? The Sheikh's leg. No you dummy, a broken leg from one of the mannequins. Long story short, as they finally reached their intended stopping point, They found some pictures of random unrelated people on the floor. Ahmed felt watched by some unseen forces, not from Star Wars, while the Sheikh felt heavy in his head, and so did Ahmed. Then, as the Sheikh was holding these pictures, something in the bathroom shattered. The Sheikh explained how he feels like there is some demonic connection between these pictures and the djinn in the building. Now the most scary scene in this whole investigation was these heads of the puppets peeking from behind walls. <laughs>
بس ممكن يكون شيء عادي ممكن يكون لا شيء له علاقه بالاسحاب ما بتعرف معقول؟ اي يمر علي انا زي هيك ايش يعني؟ يعني ما بعرف ما بعرف والله حسيت في حدا بتطلع علي انا في هذا الشيء انا اول ما بشوف صور هيك منظر معظمهم من الزعات واقسم بالله العظيم لما حملته وانطفت دخلت والله انا دخلت تفك انا بمزح انا احتفل بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ايش هذا؟ بحط الصور هيك العب شيخ بقول لك انا صور في عيشي صور في عيشي شو اللي وقع هذا؟ اه شيخ هذا اللي حصل شيخ هات هادوريا ها شو شيخ شو ورب الكون الراس اللعبة وين قسما بجلال الله هون لما وصلت الصور والله والله بقول لك والله هسه لو ورجيت لك الصور الصور شيخ والله 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 كانت واقفة يا ابن الحج وما بينهما ورب المشارق إلا زينا السماء الدنيا بزينة الكواكب وحضر كل شيطان مالك لا يسمعون إلى الملأ الأعلى دخورة والله دخورة سنة إيش مال والله دخورة 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 يا ابني والله العظيم طب خلينا I always suspect the credibility of this dude, but bringing in such a religious person to an investigation as a way to prove that it's all real is one way to distract others from knowing what to believe, even me. We all know that reflections in videos don't actually reflect us, they only reflect what's in the videos, like mirrors in videos only reflecting where it was in that video, but when it comes to the next video, I always saw myself in these reflective floors of the company. These tiles are so shiny and clean. I looked at them and thought to myself, why am I so dirty? Why can't my soul be just as pure as these floors? Is that really what the next video is all about? That the floors were so clean that it's out of this world terrifying? Absolutely not. We have a dude who works at an anonymous company where he had a scary encounter. He was once working the night shift alone and it seems like he heard noises of some sort. He was checking around the place to see if he could find someone, but at the last moments, he found what looked like a hand waving at him from behind one of these walls. Somehow, there were no reflections on the floor of that hand, so he charged at it and somehow didn't fall down. These floors, as I mentioned earlier, were so clean that they could easily be slippery. When he reached that corner, he found nothing. How expectedly chilling. The second clip was when we finally had a dialogue. It seems like that same employee is familiar with this creature, and he takes us on a trip around to see if he can find him. The ideal in these cases, people, is not to show fear. It's just the best. The best we can do is not to show fear. Because if we show fear, No tengan miedo, no tengan miedo, no tengan miedo. ¿Qué es ahí?
Fantasma fastidioso. Oiga, son las 3 de la mañana. Estoy yo trabajando, ocupado, juicioso, haciendo mis labores. Y creo que tengo un visitante que me quiere hacer compañía desde hace rato. Entonces vamos a ver si es que tiene pena de salir. O es que quiere jugar. Porque qué pereza, mi hermanito. Que comience a mover las cosas. A hacer ruidos extraños. ¿Quieres salir y conversamos, viejo? Que yo no le tengo miedo. O oh, vieja. <ríe> Pero deje trabajar. Déjeme concentrar. Vamos a ver quién está por acá. ¿Qué es lo que quieren? ¿Un tintico? Porque es que eso lo hace cualquiera. Yo también puedo tocar cosas, hacer ruidos. Deje de molestar, deje de fastidiar, mi hermanito. Ya saben, el reportero paranormal soy yo. Well, this video doesn't have much to offer, and I tried digging into the account that uploaded the clips, but as far as I found, there is nothing more that could actually be featured. The next clips might just be the most boring in this whole list, and you can't do anything about it. Well, if you think about it, you could just skip to the next clip, but what if I told you there are no clips left after this one? Then what will you do? I know you have already kneeled down, but I'm not going to give you mercy. There are enough videos for today. Then just get into the clips for God's sake. All right then. We have two different videos from the same investigation. These people, who call themselves investigators, are putting out all their junk on YouTube, As they described, these videos are from their paranormal explorations in Colorado. But that was 13 years ago, almost 14 years at this point, back in 2010. As they have sat their flashlight on the floor as a way to get some responses from the ghost in the house, they are asking the ghost to say yes or no by turning this flashlight on and off. Such a creative way for its time. Okay, we know 14 years is a long time, but not to the extent where advanced technology to communicate with ghosts didn't exist, so stop giving them credit. In the other video, while they were on the ground, don't tell me the ghost attacked them all at once, laying them down tired and hurt, and only one of them was able to keep up and keep communicating. Such a drama queen you are. No, they were just trying to continue their investigation, but one of them seems to have captured a freaky shadow passing behind the door. Please turn on the flashlight or... Set one of the green lights off. They beep, they make noise. <gasps> Thank you so much for turning that on. That is neat. Now, could you turn it off for me too? Just a question, I haven't seen that dimming. Yes, could you turn it off for me please? Thank you. Oh, you, you are, oh, that's okay, it's close. Do you not want to be in the dark? If you don't want to be in the dark, it's okay. You can make it go really bright if you don't want to be in the dark or turn it off if you're not afraid. Okay. 
Will both work? Is your name Lindsay? Turn the flashlight back on if you're Lindsay. Thank you. Thank you, Lindsay. Did you have problems breathing? No. I don't even know how to plug it in. Because it records voices. Come here. I got it. I don't know if this was her first time ever seeing a shadow cast by directing a light on something or not, but that thing she called a shadow can very easily be something, although I'm not saying they have staged anything here, because from the looks of it, these people aren't even trying to make things look impressively scary, but what I'm saying is that you should have already subscribed and watched the next video on screen.